So if I was to ask you, who are the mu'adhins of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Who would you say? The very first one. Who is it? Bilal al-Habashi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And then who? Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Those are the two most famous mu'adhins of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The person that we're going to talk about now, uh, truly a powerful story. His name is Abu Mahdhura. Abu Mahdhura. And just like Abi Bakra, he's known by Abu Mahdhura, um, his actual first name is, uh, is disputed. So is it Samura or Sumair or Salama? All of these are possibilities with him. All right, Samura or Sumair or Salama uh, uh, ibn Umair. And he is Al-Jumahi. He's from the, the same area as that woman. So he's sort of a, a, a mix between Ta'if and Mecca in this regard. All right. The incident that is known as the incident of Abu Mahdura is something that gives such a beautiful dimension of the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left the siege of Ta'if. He's making his way back to al Madina. And he has with him now these 23 escaped slaves, amongst them Abi Bakra Nufay' radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Abi Bakra, Mawla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And obviously on the way, they're making salah and they're going about their business. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this journey back from Ta'if the second time around. So it's, it's actually really interesting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never actually gets to go into Ta'if, right? He's bringing people out, he sends back the delegation, they become Muslim, but we don't actually have the incident of the Prophet ﷺ like going back to the place where he was stoned and going back to the garden. It's all now happening on the way out. The emotions are high and, you know, there is at any moment a sneak attack that could happen, an ambush that could happen. The Hawazin, those Bedouin tribes, were famous for that, right? The Prophet ﷺ orders Bilal radiallahu anhu to give the adhan, to call the adhan. And he would alternate, of course, Bilal and Ibn Umm Maktoum, depending on the situation. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu stands up to do the adhan. Abu Mahdura was with a group of youth. So they're, they're a bunch of kids, and they hate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because their parents hated the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They don't know anything about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All they know him is as the man that came from Mecca tried to cause us trouble, and then he came back again and tried to cause us trouble, they don't know about the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So while Bilal radiallahu anhu is giving the adhan, what does Abu Mahdura say we did? He said, we started to make fun of the adhan of Bilal. Okay? Kunna naskharu wa nuqallidul mu'adhan. We started to mock Bilal from afar. So you can imagine a bunch of 10 kids, you know, on the outside, making fun of him, laughing, and they're making fun of the adhan. So they're trying to call out the words and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then in a stern voice, he says, Ta'alu, come. All right, we're in trouble now. <laughs> Why? Because at the end of the day, you forgot for a moment that this man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not just the messenger of Allah, he's also a military general. Right? The Prophet ﷺ is fully suited, armored, like, you kids come here. So they come to the Prophet ﷺ and they're terrified. <laughs> like, uh, and so this is the opposite of Abi Bakr doing rukur and inching in. This is, uh-oh, we didn't think about the consequences here. We got caught and all 10 of them come in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, go ahead and do what you were doing. You were repeating the adhan, so keep saying it. They kind of look around at each other. The Prophet ﷺ said, yeah, go. So they start going, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Like, what's going to happen here? So they're not making fun of it the way that they were when Bilal anhu was doing it. So the Prophet ﷺ listened to them. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, Man alladhi kana yuqallidu al-mu'adhin? Which one of you was the one that was loudest and you know, making fun of the Mu'adhin. And Abu Mahdura said, they all pointed to me. It's also a lesson for kids too. Your friends will sell you out very quickly when fear comes. <laughs> so you're making fun of him together. 
But then, when there were consequences, the other nine kids all pointed to Abu Mahdura. Abu Mahdura was like, all right, I'm in trouble. So the Prophet وسلم, after that, so كلهم أشاروا إلي, they all pointed to me. The Prophet وسلم, said to the other nine, in Sarifu, you guys can go. What's he going to do to Abu Mahdura? Chances are, execute him, torture him, enslave him. What would a military general do? I mean, you play out the scene. It's tense moments. It's, what's he going to do with him? The Prophet he kept me with him. فَاقْتَرَبَ minni sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet came to me, came closer to me. And the Prophet said, say it again. He said, say what? He said, قُلْ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged him. قُلْ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So say it again. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, call it out the way you were calling it out. So he had him call the adhan after him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After he finished that, so he starts off in a low voice, raises his voice eventually, and the Prophet ﷺ is clearly having him demonstrate his voice in the adhan. And Abu Mahdura had a beautiful voice. So he said that after I finished, the Prophet ﷺ gave me a pouch with some silver in it, right? And he smiled, he said, هَذِهِ لَكَ This is a gift for you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Mahdura stunned, he thought he was in trouble now he's got silver in his hand. So he says, وضعوا, said, then the Prophet put his hand on my forehead and he made dua for me. And then he moved his hand وسلم, وضعوا, وضع put his hand on my heart وسلم, on my chest. And he made du'a for me. And the Prophet ﷺ moved his hand, making du'a for me as I was looking at the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, he, uh, he said, Allahumma barik lahu, Allahumma barik alayhi. Allahumma barik lahu, Allahumma barik alayhi. So part of the du'a of the Prophet ﷺ was silent. Then he said, Oh Allah, bless him, barik lahu, barik alayhi. Bless him and put blessings upon him. Bless him and put blessings upon him. He said, SubhanAllah, and this will be a familiar story. He says, Kana Rasulullah nas ilayya. That the Prophet was the most hated person to me. I hated the Prophet before that. We knew bad things about him. They're kids. His reputation was, was horrible. Fasara habbun nasi ilayya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet became the most beloved person in the world to me. Like in those moments, suddenly, I was in awe of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he asked the Prophet ﷺ, teach me again. So the Prophet ﷺ said, قُلْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ قُلْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ قُلْ أَشْهَدُ لَا إِلَهَ اللَّهُ So he's repeating it. And the Prophet ﷺ went through the whole adhan with him to make sure that he memorized it properly. And then the nerve of Abu Mahdura, man, these young people, Abu Mahdura, says, Ya Rasulullah, اجعلني أؤذن في مكة. O Messenger of Allah, let me be the Mu'addin of Mecca. Like a minute ago, you were making fun of my Mu'addin. You're lucky I spared you. I gave you some money and I made du'a for you and you're, you're Muslim now and your heart is full of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now you're saying, let me be the Mu'addin. You haven't even prayed a salah yet. Ya Rasulullah, اجعلني مؤذن في مكة. The Prophet Wasallam said, okay. <laughs> I'll make you the Mu'addin of Mecca. And so he has Bilal radiallahu anhu with him and Ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu anhu obviously in Medina. And the Prophet sallallahu had left Attab ibn Usayd. Attab ibn Usayd radiallahu anhu as the Amir of Mecca. I mean, this is right after Fatih Mecca. So Mecca has just been conquered fresh and they moved on to Ta'if and the Prophet sallallahu left an Amir there. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I'm going to send for him for you to be the Mu'addin قَالْ إِذْهَبْ فَأَذِّنْ عِنْدَ الْبَيْتِ الْحَرَامِ Go ahead, you're going to give the adhan at al-bayt al-haram. It's yours. SubhanAllah, in one moment you're mocking him in ta'af, the next moment you're being sent to be the mu'addin of Mecca. And this is, SubhanAllah, so powerful and profound. He goes to Mecca and he had such a 
beautiful voice. So Abu Mahdura had such an enjoyable voice in Mecca that people loved to hear his adhan. So people would ask him to repeat it. He had the singer's voice, right? But he used it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he goes back to Mecca. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has appointed him as the mu'adhan. And Abu Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu would never leave the haram. He was the five times a day mu'adhan of Mecca. While the Prophet was still alive, he would not leave his position out of fear that someone else would take it from him. So no one else is giving adhan except for me, Abu Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And his voice was beautiful, so people uh, let it happen. And on top of that, subhanAllah, this is, this is something so powerful. You see the love that he had for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would not ever cut the part of his hair that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa touched. لَمْ يَحْلِقْهَا وَلَمْ يَفْرِقْهَا He wouldn't even part it. So the part of his hair that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam touched when he made dua for him, Abu Mahdura said, I'm never cutting this again. <laughs> never parting it. I'm never cutting it. So he was known, radiallahu anhu, that he would trim, he would do everything, but he'd leave that part of his hair. Because he was like, the Prophet sallallahu made dua for me, he touched that part of my head, and he, and he uh, prayed for me, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what ends up happening, subhanAllah, is that he goes on as well to become a companion. He has students who narrate from him. Uh, all eight of his narrations have to do with adhan. You know, like just the mu'adhan, and that's it, ubas, nothing else. I'm a mu'adhan, I know the adhan, that's what the Prophet ﷺ appointed me to do. I'm not doing anything else, so all of his narrations uh, have to do with the adhan. And by the way, if you hear adhan abi mahdura, it's a term in fiqh, it's a term in jurisprudence. Why? You know how sometimes people want to fight each other over the way the iqama is done? So for example, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ashadu wa la ilaha Allah, or Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Right? So do you repeat it four times or do you repeat it two times? You can find narrations for both. The adhan of Abi Mahdura, the Prophet ﷺ taught him, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Allah ilaha Allah, Ashadu Allah ilaha Allah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashadu Allah ilaha Allah, Ashadu Allah ilaha Allah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayya Rasulullah, Hayya Rasulullah, Hayya Rasulullah, Hayya Rasulullah, So the Prophet ﷺ taught him what is known in this regard, right, as the, the, the quadruple form of this recitation. So there's a tarji' with tarbi' to literally repeat it four times, right? And it was narrated from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when you hear Adhan Abi Mahdura as an acceptable way of making Adhan, this is who it goes back to, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught me to make the Adhan this way, and he was not combated in this regard. And so for generations, that's how the Adhan of Mecca was, Adhan Abi Mahdura. If you went to Mecca, you heard the Adhan in the style of Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. On top of that, you know how the Prophet sallallahu gave the key to the Kaaba to Uthman bin Talha and his relatives radiallahu anhu and said it has to remain in his descendants? Abi Mahdura, his descendants have to be the Mu'addin of Mecca. Up until the time that Imam al-Dhahabi rahimahullah is writing about uh, Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, فَبَقِيَ الْأَذَانُ فِي وَلَدِهِ وَوَلَدِ وَلَدِهِ until today in Mecca, the adhan has remained from the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren of Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Only the children of Abu Mahdura get to give the adhan and he lived a long life radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And there's actually a really uh, funny incident before I move on uh, to the last part of this. Again, his name is, is not really known. Uh, Muawiyah had sent a mu'adhan to, uh, to Mecca, the time of Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Abu Mahdura was like, I'm not having it. <laughs> so when the Mu'addin for Mu'awiyah came, it literally says, فَاحْتَمَلَهُ Abu Mahdura فَأَلْقَاهُ فِي زَمْزَم Abu Mahdura pushed him into Zamzam. He said, you're not taking this adhan from me. So he still had that attitude like, nope. <laughs> I'm the Mu'addin of Mecca. <laughs> no one else will come between me and this reward of Abu Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. There's even a poem, subhanAllah, that was, uh, that was authored. Uh, وَأَنْشَدَ مُسْعَبُ بْنُ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ لِبَعْضِهِمْ 
قال أما ورب الكعبة المستورة وما تلا محمد من سورة والنغمات من أبي محذورة لأفعلن فعلة منكورة So he rhymed it. He said that I swear by the Lord of the dressed Kaaba and by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on what he recited of Surah and by the Adhan of Abi Mahdura that I'm going to do something you're not going to like. So he used those rhymes because it became known that this is the Adhan of Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. SubhanAllah, the lessons that can be gleaned from this. Again, sometimes you have to see potential even in a person who doesn't even show any willingness to be guided. And you have to be able to see what they're good at. So just like the Prophet ﷺ saw something very specific in Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I see something very specific in this young man, Abi Mahdura radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him a task and he stuck him to that. And Abi Mahdura owned that task and he never left it. So how do you not break a young person? Like you literally could take the lessons one by one here, and how do you not break a young person that is showing you great potential the way that the Prophet did not break this young person.